My security director just keeled over. It started in the banquet hall. I had asked him to come meet me and discuss plans to beef up our protection after a recent mishap that had me worried about the integrity of the entire system. Sean is a nice guy. I've only had him on the crew for about three cycles now, but he is a bit too optimistic, doesn't realize just how nasty this job is. We pride ourselves with keeping our guests safe, no matter how long they have to stay, Sean. Do you understand what I'm saying? I asked as we went down the cafeteria aisle. At the time of the incident, our capacity was nearly 300 and rising. Apparently, there had been a recent uprising in a neighboring country, and a large nest of vampires came seeking shelter. To say they were hostile upon arriving was an understatement. Everywhere we looked, covens were fighting each other, either for some former sense of status or just a sense of control. Sean insisted he could handle matters, but it's always been difficult to keep the guests tamed. Comes with the territory. That's what Margarita would say if she was still alive. She died a few cycles back. Best damn director I ever had. Sean is just a poor reflection of her work ethic, but he does try his best. By the end of the dinner, thanks to a drop of supplies from the chef, the vamps had settled down and were feasting on fresh meat while I got a warning on my cell. Jerome, VIP guest arriving at front counter. It was enough to make me feel like I needed to vomit. We use the term VIP a bit differently than most places, because rather than meaning we consider them a valuable guest and appreciate their business, we recognize that when they arrive frequently here, the outside tends to follow. That's how the gate works. Every time a guest comes in for a short window of time, we are visible to the outside world, and some of the better monster hunters out there have learned to spot it. I tried to remain calm as I rode the elevator to the bottom floor checking a few other normal messages from housekeeping and food service. Nothing else was out of the ordinary for this crazy day, but something told me it wasn't going to stay that way. As the silver plated doors opened and I saw the dark haired woman in the red overcoat standing at the front counter, I knew that wasn't going to be possible. Valerie, I thought I told you that you couldn't come back here. I said as Jerome went to go attend to a crying imp near the vending machine. Theo, please, you don't understand. I'm in real trouble this time, she told me as she placed her sunglasses on, and I realized that she was soaked from head to foot. Tell me what happened, I urged her as I shuffled over to the side of the entrance. There was a raid in the bunker of Budapest, some new militias trying to eradicate my species. Theo, these people mean business. They want to make me extinct, she said softly as she shuddered and her shining wings dripped water from under her coat. You flew here all the way from Budapest? I asked in shock. I didn't have a choice, I'm sorry. I know that things haven't been the best lately, but I didn't know where else to go. Roman said I could trust you, he said. I opened my mouth to chastise her when another brawl started near the front lounge, this time between two golems. The stony creatures were getting ready to tear down the entire structure if necessary, and I could feel my stomach twist in knots as I realized today was going to be a cluster. Val, sit tight for now, okay? We will figure this out. I have to manage this place for a few hours, come up with solutions, I said as I grabbed one of the magic daggers that we keep on emergency behind the front counter and ran to the lounge to get between the two monsters. Stop this right now or I swear to God I will turn you both into statues for my conservatory, I warned. Truth be told, I was scared to death they might try to crush me. I had just gone through a body because of a security breach and Jerome had warned me not to get into any trouble while he worked on growing me another shell. But I couldn't just sit idly by as my establishment was torn to shreds either. The golems considered their options, ready to smash me to bits. Then to my surprise, Valerie walked in holding a spell book. Immediately she started chanting and the monsters started yelling and cussing in their unique language. I was about to warn her to stop when they both froze and she grabbed my hand and led me back to the lobby. I'm sorry I had to do that, Theo, but it looked like you needed the help, she said. I nervously looked at the golems and then toward the spell book. That sort of thing isn't allowed in here. You know that. If one of my guests sees that, it's liable to start up a riot. She didn't comprehend the danger she was putting me in. Instead, all she did was huff and explain. Well, I'm sorry that I just saved your life. I told you that I would handle it, but as long as my two guests are fine, I guess it doesn't matter. I said with a sigh, trying to calm down. At this rate, I would die from stress. This book is the last in my family line, Theo. 
It's the reason that these idiots tried to kill me, she said, clinging to it. Fine, you can keep it, but don't go waving it around, I said as I waved to Jerome and told him to get her a room on the sixth floor. I had another mess to deal with. While I had been busy trying to calm the golems down, Sean had texted me and told me there was an issue with two vampires at the spa. When I arrived, he was already dead, and the two males were fighting over his body. It took a moment for my head to stop spinning and understand what had happened. Likely the one male was more light sensitive than the other, and the use of the tanning booth had sparked some survival instinct inside him. Sean had likely seen the fight get started and tried to intervene, but then I knew better than to get in between two vampires that were in the middle of bloodlust. The only way this was going to be resolved would be if one got staked, or if one of them beheaded the other. I watched as they clawed over Sean's body and snarled at each other, shrieking and defiant. The others in the spa area were clearly upset, but not making a move to leave. Maybe all part of the same coven, I thought. And then I had a radical idea. It was just crazy enough to work, and I knew my options were limited. I moved toward the fire extinguishers and took one out of the glass, careful to not draw attention to myself. One false move, and my head could be on the ground alongside Sean's mangled body. Then I moved toward the stoic vampires that were watching the two males fight and decided to restore order. Listen up. If you can't behave yourselves, then I'm going to have to ice some of your harem over here. Do you understand me? I shouted. The one male seemed to make sense of my words, but the other was too enthralled with the fight to listen. I was petrified inside he would decide to make my head his new necklace. Human, stay out of this feud, the first vamp insisted. Wish I could, but this is my establishment and we have rules. You've already killed one of my staff, so you're lucky I haven't kicked you out. Now sit your asses down. I ordered, pointing the extinguisher at one of the women standing near the wall. His eyes flashed worry and concern, and I saw a hint of regret over his actions. But in that moment of hesitation, the other male struck. They were back at each other's throats before I could move, and it was all over a second later. The first vampire had won, using his brute strength to break his opponent in two and be covered in a triumphant bloodbath. Then, completely splattered in the remains of his enemy, he turned to me and begged for the safety of his coven. You are an honorable man, Mr. Sharp. My coven has done nothing wrong, he said. I was shocked that he had been able to overcome bloodlust so quickly. What is your name? I asked. Marius, he answered, bowing respectfully. I bit my lip, mulling over all of the options in my head. The security of my guests was first and foremost. Come to my office at 3.30 tomorrow, Marius. I have a job proposal I want to make with you. Thanks for listening. If you enjoy these stories, be sure to subscribe to the podcast and check out some more of my episodes here.